Welcome back to Ketone Body Metabolism on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. As I've mentioned in this video, we're going to be talking about ketone bodies, specifically their biosynthesis, which is going to occur in the liver. All right. Now, it's no secret that if you're in a fasting state, so not necessarily starving, but let's say you haven't eaten in you know six or seven hours, your blood sugar is going to be dropping. And so there's going to be less glucose available to metabolize. All right. And so in wake of there being little glucose, the body's going to switch more to fatty acid metabolism. Okay. And the liver is going to play a large role in this. So the liver can metabolize fatty acids and through the process of beta oxidation the liver can actually generate molecules of acetyl-CoA. Hopefully you know that through the process of beta oxidation other than NADH and FADH2 acetyl-CoA is the major product of beta oxidation. And from the acetyl-CoA's we can actually through the liver manufacture three ketone bodies. All right. And that's what we're going to look at the biosynthesis of in this video. So again, this is a process that's going to be pretty much exclusively hepatic. All right. So when we have excess acetyl-CoA from fatty acid beta oxidation, we can actually form ketone bodies. And once we form these, we can dump them into the blood where they will travel to peripheral tissues, such as the skeletal muscle, the brain, the heart, and be utilized for energy production. And that energy production we look at in the next video. All right, so the first reaction is the condensation of two molecules of acetyl-CoA. And this is catalyzed by an enzyme called phylase. It's a reversible reaction. In fact, this is the same enzyme that's the terminal step in each cycle of beta oxidation, okay? Except it's doing the reverse reaction here. It's actually doing a condensation. And when we condense these two molecules of acetyl-CoA with the loss of CoA, we get this condensation product acetoacetyl-CoA. All right, now we have a four carbon molecule. Now we're going to convert acetoacetyl-CoA into this molecule, usually abbreviated as HMG-CoA, but its full name is beta hydroxy beta methyl glutaryl coa It's this molecule right here. And it's going to be catalyzed through this enzyme called HMG-CoA synthase. And it's actually going to require a third molecule of acetyl-CoA, and it's going to condense that with acetoacetyl-CoA with the loss of another CoA and you get this molecule HMG-CoA. So notice now we have one, two, three, four, five, and six carbons, all right? Now, this HMG-CoA has a number of uh, metabolic fates, and actually both of these are actually gonna occur in the liver, and depending on the state of the liver, whether it's fasting or fed, the liver is gonna choose one of these paths to go on. If we're in a fed state and we've got plenty of energy, so no need to produce many ketone bodies, so in the fed state, the reaction of choice is going to be HMG-CoA reductase. So this is going to convert HMG-CoA into a molecule called mevalonate, and this is actually going to be the committed step in cholesterol biosynthesis, among a number of other things such as vitamin D and coenzyme Q. But this is only going to occur to the right towards mevalonate if we're in a fed state. But we're not in a fed state right now, rather we're in a fasting state. And so this next enzyme, HMG-CoA lyase, is going to be the enzyme associated with the fasting state where we produce ketone bodies. And we're actually going to get our first ketone body with this reaction. What's going to happen is we're going to lose a molecule of acetyl-CoA, so we actually get one back. And in the process we actually get this four carbon molecule, our first ketone body called acetoacetate. All right? So acetoacetate is a true ketone body, and actually out of these three ketone bodies, really only two of them are ketones, that is acetoacetate and acetone. This one, as you can see down here, beta-hydroxybutyrate, does not actually have a ketone functional group, so it's kind of a misnomer, but it's still considered one of the three. So acetoacetate can actually be used for energy production. It can be dumped into the blood and travel to peripheral tissues for energy. But acetoacetate can also do two other reactions to produce the other two ketone bodies. The first and most notable is beta-hydroxybutyrate dehydrogenase. At least in the direction from acetoacetate to beta-hydroxybutyrate, it's going to consume a molecule of NADH, and so it's going to reduce this ketone right here into an alcohol, okay, a secondary alcohol. And this is also another ketone body, even though it does not actually have a ketone functional group. And so beta-hydroxybutyrate can also be used for energy, in which case it's dumped into the blood and it goes to peripheral tissues, as did acetoacetate. But there's another reaction here, and that's acetoacetate decarboxylase. 
So this carboxyl group over here on the left side of the molecule can actually be removed, it's just a simple decarboxylation. It's removed as CO2, and we end up getting this molecule, which is called acetone. Now, as I mentioned, every one of these three ketone bodies is gonna be dumped into the blood, and it's gonna to go to peripheral tissues, such as I mentioned, the heart, skeletal muscle, the brain, and even the kidney, and those tissues can actually use these ketone bodies for energy production. We're going to look at those pathways in the next video. Um, and notice that those pathways for ketone body metabolism are all extrahepatic, meaning this is not done in the liver. The liver does not utilize ketone bodies, and we'll talk about the very important reason why. The liver only manufactures the ketone bodies. It only performs the biosynthesis, okay? Now, one other thing I did want to mention, just as an intro to the next video where we talk about the catabolism for these ketone bodies, is that typically in most textbooks, and certainly this uh, image is from Leninger's Biochemistry, it's the same way, it really only talks about the metabolism of acetoacetate and beta-hydroxybutyrate because the pathway for, or pathways plural for uh, this degradation uh, for energy is very well characterized. Acetone's metabolism is virtually non-existent if you look in any textbook. However, it is known through experimental evidence that acetone actually is catabolized. It is exhaled through expiration through the lungs to some extent, but there actually is a catabolic pathway for acetone. There is experimental evidence to suggest that. Although there are a couple of enzymes that have not been able to be characterized, it's apparently, from what I've read, a very difficult pathway to study. Uh, from a biochemical perspective. But it is known that acetone is catabolized, and we'll talk about that in the next video as well. But hopefully, this video made sense, and you understand how the liver manufactures these ketone bodies, and under what conditions, and for what purpose. Please make sure to like this video, and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.